Hi there, Starscream back. Well, I've seen Dark of the Moon. When our allies turn against us. I think our ships fire after us! The very words have leave a slightly bitter taste in my mouth, and they make me uncomfortable saying it, but I have seen it now, and... My God! I don't think I, th I have ever seen a film quite that bad in my life. Um, I don't really know where to begin with it. It, to be even talked about, is a waste of air and oxygen in my opinion. You know, precious air and oxygen. It's had enough money thrown at it, you see. Let me be honest with you, I can't understand how with this amount of money and this amount of budget, that when I watched the film, I was bored. I'm not, I am not kidding you around. I was bored stiff. I didn't care about anything that was going on. There was no character development at all. The story ran for about 20 minutes and then just fizzled out. Then we have a bit of um, plot. I use the word plot very, very loosely. Between this woman who comes in from the government and she won't allow Sam to, you know, um, function with the Autobots or to work with them because apparently now they don't really need him. He's done his bit. I'll take my orders from the Autobots. I know them. I don't know you. You will. But I did not want you calling this phone. Listen, the whole thing has been a set up since the beginning. The Decepticons wanted Optimus to find Sentinel because only Optimus could revive him. But we have the space bridge. That makes no sense. But that's just getting the beginning of it. Um, th then we have the introduction of Sentinel Prime. Now, okay, before I continue, there will be spoilers here, right? So, look. Spoilers. I use that word very loosely yet again. If you go and see the film, it's a spoiler. If you even think about seeing the film, it's a spoiler. And after you've seen it, you're bleeding pissed off. So, yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying. Sentinel Prime is a bad guy. He comes down and you think he's a good guy. He's not a good guy. He's a bad guy. He's a bleeding stupid bad guy at that. And the... Uh, they don't really develop the character. He just functions. He's not a character of Sentinel Prime. He just does things. And the weak uh, explanation at the end is I did it to save Cybertron. Well, boo-hoo! Big freaking... Oh, God. Right. You know, calm. This, there's no point getting worked up about this film, because it isn't, isn't worth it. It really isn't. Okay, now we have the introduction of this new girl in it, who is a model. She does the entire film pouting and posing. It is nauseating beyond all belief. She can't act. I've pointed this out before. She's any more wooden, you'd make a bookcase out of her. She is atrocious in the lines when she delivers them. The clunky lines at best, I understand. But she delivers them even worse than the lines are written. My God, she makes Megan Fox look like an Academy Award winner. And that's saying something, because she's a ham actress too, but at least she is an actress, not a shitty model with a bad accent. And I can talk, I know all about bad accents, but my God, my God, that is atrocious. She's just getting pouting. Why don't they put a bit more collagen in her lips to just, just smother her whole face? And the introduction of seeing her ass. Now, I've got no problem with seeing Megan Fox's ass or hunting and Rosalie what the uh, hell the ass is. But that's not why I'm here to watch a Transformer film. It's almost, from what I can tell, it's like Michael Bay going, look, we've lost Megan Fox's ass, but we've got a new ass, and it's almost as good as the last ass, if not better. It's not half ass, the last. You know, my God, is that the man's direction of the film? And he does the undercut shots that paparazzi use, you know? Oh, my God, man, is he bloody hell? Oh, and he looks so funny next, standing next to Sam because she towers above him like some gla galactic giant, is all I can say. She's taller than practically everybody else. She's probably taller than Prime. And then, and there's another bit in the film where it's, I'll tell you what it is, essentially, look, we're focusing on the girl, but we're meant to be talking about the car, but talking about fine lines and curvation is actually applying to the woman, or the girl, I should say, not the car. Michael Bayman... You have stooped an all-time low. Man, you really have. You need to seek help. More so than me, actually. But anyway, let's say about me and more so about him. So, that bit I found a little bit uncomfortable to watch. Transformers is a film that after you've seen it, you feel dirty and unclean after watching it. You don't want to admit to people you've seen it. It's that bad. But when you're watching it, you think, oh, I don't feel right. I feel strangely 
uncomfortable and dirty. And that's the feeling I got when I left seeing this blasted film. Now, the only one bit of the film I'd say had any emotional involvement is when Ironhide gets it. What you must realize, my Autobot brothers, is we were never going to win the war. For the sake of our planet's survival, a deal had to be made with Megatron. <laughs> And I thought it was a cheap shot, and I thought, that's not very nice, I didn't like that bit at all. And after that, I didn't give a shit about anybody, because there's lots of people dying, and these robots in the background who are apparently dying, but we don't know who they are, uh, we don't care who they are, it's never explained what they do, they have no character development, we don't give a shit. You see, Michael Bay, you, you have to understand that for us to care when somebody dies, we actually have to have a backstory or a character development, so that we'll miss them when they're gone. It's like me giving you this and then taking it away again, but you never even touched it, so you wouldn't really care because it was never yours, would you? So, having a character suddenly appear for one second, then being dead the next second, why would you care? You do not care. Oh. And Starscream's death is absolutely pathetic. I don't even know why they bothered killing him off. I just wish he'd just vanished into thin air, because this essentially would have been a lot better than his shitty death scene. If he didn't even have a shitty death scene, he just sort of... Um, bugged me a lot. And Megatron's death scene is equally as pathetic, if not worse. He beats up Sentinel Prime, and then Optimus Prime, with one arm, okay, just gets up and pulls his head off. Oh, Megatron's just going, oh, oh no, well, deal, go on then, go for it. Oh, bugger it, you pulled my head off. And then Prime, this is Optimus Prime here, okay, he's supposed to be above such things, isn't he? You know, he's supposed to be the great leader, you know, absolutely uncompromising moral standing. You do not shoot an unarmed Autobot or Decepticon. You've watched the original 80s movie. He was hesitant to pull the trigger on Megatron because he thought it was an arm. In this! No, in this it's fine. Sentinel Prime's on the floor saying, I'm sorry, I, I did it for the best of Cybertron. And Optimus Prime goes, yeah, yeah, pff, pff, yeah, eat that, you sucking mother. My God! Did Michael Bay not get it? It is quite possibly one, did you hear that horn about three or four seconds ago while I was rambling on how much I dislike this film? Does it really matter? No, it doesn't. Now I have some controversial shots. I think the main story of Bay's new film is actually taken from two episodes from the original cartoon show. So what I'm going to show you now is some clips from the film and some clips from the show and you will see a remarkable resemblance to the cartoon. <sighs> Human from change. 
Remember this. You may lose your faith in us, but never in yourselves. Where is Spike? He's still searching for evidence. I guess it's too late for that now. took over the planet. I'm gonna say we just stood by and watched. I wonder what would happen if the election were held today. I think you can see what I mean. I rest my case, and I'm not even gonna get onto the wreckers, because as far as I'm concerned, they're dead to me. You guys are the wreckers, they take care of the Xanthium. We don't let them off the base much because they're assholes. You gonna pull out your nuts here, white guy? It's time to kill! I'm sick and tired of focusing up on big shiny cars driving around a lot. It's a good job the Autobots go into cars, or Michael Bay would have nothing to film, would he? Because he just likes showing me in alt mode because he likes cars, just driving around looking shiny. Bling bling. Man, it's annoying. The film is shit. I hate it. I don't think I'll ever see it again. I didn't think I could see a film worse than Revenge of the Fallen. I, I actually lost for words. It probably is if bad if not worse. I have no idea what was going on. And you know, the real icing on the cake is we just had John Malkovich in it being John Malkovich. But son, this is the job of standing in the way. And that's why you're going to be so very, very good at it. Because when I look at you, I see a younger me. And you know what? Why the hell not? I would have liked to see Bugs Bunny in it as well and Roger Rabbit. You know what? Just because we can. I think the only character in the whole film was Wheelie. And he's a Transformer I, I, I like the least out of the original movie. But he's the only one who has a character in it. We have Laserbeak introduced in this who talks. And he's, he's more like, um, what's his name? Ratbat. He's constantly trying to weigh up situations and work it out, and he talks. I'm not so against him talking, but it just doesn't seem in character. But it doesn't matter because he doesn't have a bleeding character. You see, do we Oh, shit! What? Who wants some chicken dinner now, bitch? Because somebody messed with the wrong way today. Oh, and... <sighs> Shockwave. Why is Shockwave in it? I mean, he does absolute nothing I mean what a you ah god uh, I hate the film and I don't think I'll ever ever see it again <laughs>